Support Narrative's independent journalism at patreon.com forward slash narrative and check out our podcast wherever you get your podcasts and don't forget to subscribe and download. Let's begin this week's AMA, the Ask Me Anything with Stephen Hoffenberg. I have 10 fantastic questions here from our very smart audience members. How did Epstein get involved with intelligence? Epstein, after being thrown out of Bear Stones and fired, he was seeking employment as a consultant for a couple of consulting companies he set up. In that quest for clients, he met a man named Douglas Lees, mm-hmm. a British man based in the UK, traveling the world, and he secured assignments in consulting with the Lees companies that were entrenched in illegal activities, the clear violations of criminal law that Douglas Lees and his team of executives were violating in arms dealing, intelligence gathering for intelligence agencies, money manipulation, monetary fraud, illegal securities trading. A lot of these agents or so-called agents of these military intelligence communities do actual things. They buy and sell weapons. They launder money. They're doing it on behalf of the, the, the community or the intelligence agency for which they're working. But they're not just spying in the traditional sense of just collecting information. They're, a, they're agents involved in acts. And often those acts are criminal acts. And I think what you're saying in, what, in your description there is he meets Douglas Lees. And Douglas Lees does a lot of this, uh, you know, off the books kind of shady deals with some of it with the blessing of the queen, perhaps, um, because it's part of MI6 or MI9. And then Epstein gets involved in these, in these deal-making things, and that is what ultimately makes him an agent. It's not so much just about spying. It's also about all this other illegal activity related to these other crimes, like money laundering and arms dealing. They call that intelligence work, mm-hmm. the other activities that you're discerning. Yeah. He, Epstein, and I were both requested to do that work, intelligence work by Douglas Lease. Mm -hmm. And Epstein accepted that assignment and was trained effectively by Douglas Lease's team. You get trained when you agree to be an intelligence gathering person. Mm -hmm. And he was trained thoroughly by these people working with Douglas Lease and Anand Khashoggi. Douglas Lease is at least assumed to be a MI6 or maybe MI9 um, agent. Was Epstein an MI6 and MI9 agent? The way it works is Douglas Lease hired Epstein, who was under the banner of Douglas Lease who was an effective agent Mm -hmm. of intelligence for the UK. Very effective. I was an eyewitness to that. Yeah, so knighted for it, I think. He seemed to do a good job for that. Twice. Yes, oh, twice. Twice. I didn't know twice. I mean, that's a a good indication of he's doing quite well for them. Um, But Epstein, did he work for the MI6 or MI9? Well, once again, if he's working for Douglas Lee's, and Douglas Lease is recognized by a spying agency, then the answer is Epstein is employed by a master spy. So the answer is yes, but you have to go through the details of the employment. So even though he was working for Israeli military intelligence, which we have established a narrative exclusively, um, he was also doing work at different times for different agencies, like perhaps as he did for MI6 or MI9 through Douglas Lease. Yes, most definitely. Okay, let's get back to part two of um, our uh, our question here. By the way, it comes from a, a big follower of ours, Zach Comins, and he wants to know, um, can you confirm that Donald Barr did in fact hire Epstein? This is Bill Barr's father who ran the Dalton School. Um, and if you can confirm it, what is the significance of his hiring 
um, Epstein? I can confirm the reports mm -hmm. that the headmaster of the Dalton School, who I believe at that period of time, was Donald Bard, the father of the current Attorney General of the United States. Does it have a linkage to the Attorney General of the United States? I would say no, because there was nothing unusual taking place. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time. I'm going I'm to argue back on that one. There was a lot unusual going on. At the time that Donald Barr hired Jeffrey Epstein to be a teacher with no experience at the Dalton School, one of the most prestigious schools in, in, in America, Bill Barr was an agent for the CIA, was already an analyst between 1973 and 1975, the same years that uh, Epstein was working for Donald Barr. He was already working at the CIA. You don't think there's a linkage there? He wasn't, he wasn't a recruiter. Being an analyst at the CIA, which you're detailing, mm -hmm. doesn't make him the hiring agency at the CIA. And I'm not defending anybody. I'm crossing the T's and dotting the I's so that we get the right story. He here. was employed by the CIA. He was an analyst for the CIA, working on very interesting work related to the Vietnam War. Uh, and, and I believe also at Columbia University doing some, you know, uh, hidden kind of work, uh, spying on activists at, at Columbia University. Yes, but that has nothing to do with Jeffrey Epstein. Well, except for the fact that his father just hires Jeffrey Epstein, uh, you know, and, and it's not like uh, Bill Barr went away during his school years. He was just here up the street at Columbia University. And then he got it, you know, if, if Jeffrey Epstein was a teacher at, uh, at Donald Barr's school, what is the likelihood well, that, these, that these people would have intersected? And don't forget, Donald Barr himself is a former, um, what's the predecessor of the CIA? It's called the OSS. Uh, he is, he was to be a spy for America as well. What's the likelihood of three uh, spies like that converging in a story there 40 is years no ago? question. There is no doubt that Donald Barr was impressed with Jeffrey Epstein's mind, mm -hmm. his thinking process, his depth of mathematics and science, and his ability to transfer that knowledge to young elite students at the Dalton School. Mm -hmm. And as the headmaster or the principal of the Dalton School, that put Donald Barr into the authority to give Epstein a waiver, not being credentialed, to try him as a teacher in the Dalton School, which he did for two years. True. But you know what I'm saying. I know you're trying to... Uh, you're linking it together, yeah. and I'm not disputing your yeah. linkage. Okay. But I'm, I'm not looking at that to what's taking place today and thereafter. Understood. All right, let's move on to the next question. This comes from Thomas... Volsho, Thomas Volsho, sorry for not saying your name correctly, Thomas. Um, when you met Jeffrey Epstein, did he show evidence of any credentials such as a Series 7 or 63 license? And then he wants to know, was Epstein broke when he you met had him? Lost, he had lost both of those licenses when he left their stearns, so he could not show that evidence. Can you explain to our audience no, what those two licenses are? Yes, those are the licenses that the Securities and Exchange Commission issue to executives that seek to be on Wall Street in dealing with investment banking and the sales of securities. And Epstein was licensed, and he lost those licenses for violations of the rules of the Securities and Exchange Commission. So he could not show evidence that he was licensed. It's interesting that he says he lost those two licenses. Do you believe that he really lost them or was it just, a, just another Well, no, he lost them. I've seen evidence. Oh. Uh, and did he ever tell you, by the way, that he lost them or is this something you just recorded? Oh, yes. He did. Yes. No, no, no. He lost them. So you were trying to hire he him as a consultant them. for Towers Financial at the time. Wouldn't those licenses have been interesting for you to, to see and important for you to see? No, he was not applying for a job 
that required those licenses. Ah, good point. He was applying for a job in marketing around the world. Oh, that's do I haven't heard Running, that. He's, that he was well, a marketing I'm job? Telling you, I'm telling you what he was applying for. It was a marketing job of securities to be sold with the assistance of others that could sell the securities and he could sell the securities Epstein in certain countries and that was the job he applied for. Was that a way to get around the SEC's um, investigation around him and the fact that he was no longer licensed? Was this a, a way to get around that this marketing job? Yes, absolutely. Interesting. All right, and then so the next question uh, Thomas was asking here, let's just make sure that I've answered it complete, that he's asked it completely. Oh, uh, was Epstein broke when you met him? I don't know why he's asking that question, but uh, I'd be interested in your answer. Yes, Epstein, when he met me, was broke, had no money, overspent his salary and his expenses, and he was in dire financial trouble. Hmm. Yes. But he was still working for Douglas Lease at the time, wasn't he? According to Douglas Lease, Epstein took advantage of the company's money, capital, treasury, and took money he wasn't entitled to out of the company under fake expenses. So he was cooking the books a little bit, Epstein. Yes. And Douglas yes. Lee still recommended him to you? Douglas Lee saw the great ability of the Wall Street knowledge and the fabulous marketing capacity of Epstein being able to sell so effectively to investors that he felt that the Douglas Lee partnership in Towers Financial would be increased substantially if Epstein were to be an important component of marketing the Towers Financial Securities, which he became. He joined Towers Financial after they had marketed about $20 million and took that division up to just about a billion dollars. Yes, so he was a he smart guy, is, yes. but he also was a obviously a criminal guy because he was cooking the books at, at the lease company, and now you are hiring a guy who, who, who was cooking the books of the lease company. Why Why did you hire him? Well, he came with an enormous recommendation from Douglas Lease, mm. who was a very prominent man, knighted twice, very successful industrialist, had a legacy of family, being leaders of industry in the UK, and that had a lot of weight, and Epstein interviewed perfectly mm. for the job. It does seem to me that you are still, in hindsight, quite impressed with uh, Jeffrey Epstein as a financial mind and as a marketer and um, maybe even fixer of, of the financial markets. Yes, that's correct. Arapaho4415. I think I'm saying that correct. Arapaho415. That's the Twitter handle. She, or he asked, but I think it's a she, says, Nixon's son, Edward, worked at Towers, among many other Republican names. What gives? Donald Nixon Jr. worked for Towers in California. That was Richard Nixon, President Richard Nixon's oldest brother, his son, mm -hmm. Donald Nixon Jr., he did work at Towers. So it's not Edward, as well, Robert, as, as the questioner, or maybe I, I put it down correctly, said, but so it's Donald Nixon. And what role did he play there? He was in customer sales in the accounts receivable division. Now, Edward Nixon, the president's brother, participated in the acquisition of Pan American Airways at Towers Financial with Jeffrey Epstein. Ah. And, and John Mitchell, the former Attorney General of the United States, participated with them. And Congressman Thomas Evans, Jr., 
who is the co-chairman of the Republican National Committee with Senator Dole, participated with Epstein regularly at Towers Financial in the Pan Am transaction and other transactions. And our next question comes from Mindful Koala, who asks, was Epstein involved in hiding the dollars used for bribes in the $438 million al Yamana arms deal scandal? My understanding from Epstein and Lease is that he was involved, but I couldn't tell you today to what degree of his involvement. I was not an employee of Douglas Lease's companies. Right. Douglas Lease was an associate of Towers Financial where I was an employee. Right. And I had a working, regular, ongoing, daily interaction with Douglas Lease for years. How many years? So I, oh, I would say uh, six, seven, eight. Before before Epstein came to work for you, or over yes. uh, overlapping yes. that time yes. we, before yes, six to seven yes. years. So that takes us to the early eighties, right? Presumably, eighties, nineties, mm. ongoing, even further down the road. I had interaction with Douglas Lee. So let's be clear: this is the same man you you have identified as being a agent, a master spy for MI six. Um, you had an arrangement with him and you spoke to him on a regular basis because you were both related to Towers Financial. You call him an associate. What does that mean, an associate of Towers Financial? He had a business responsibility at Towers Financial that he performed through his team, employees, and his whole operation around the world. What do you mean by that obligation? What, what, what does that mean? What does it look like? He had a big company involved in marketing, investment banking, insurance, finance, all over the globe. Mm -hmm. And that was his responsibility, the operations of that big company. And that's why he hired Jeffrey Epstein to be one of his team, employees, senior people. How did you come to meet Douglas Lease? I mean, we know how you you met Jeffrey Epstein through Douglas Lease, but how did you land up hooking up with this MI6 master spy? I met Douglas Lease through an introduction of some people in Washington, D.C., where Douglas Lease had a following and a linkage mm -hmm. to the American political system. That's very broad. You're not being very specific. Was there a specific person or uh, you say who these people are watching? And if you can't answer, that's okay, of course. But um, is there a, someone who introduced you? Is there a specific somebody? There was a large group of people involved with Douglas Lee and himself. Let's go back to Al Yamana then. $438 million Al Yamana deal to sell the Saudis a lot of weapons. It was exposed at around the same time that you and Towers Financial uh, we're about to bring on Jeffrey Epstein. Is there any linkage between the setup of Towers Financial and Al Yamana? You would have to link together the investments into Towers Financial that Jeffrey Epstein did a great job because he came on board, as I said earlier, and they had at Towers Financial did about $20 million of business at that time. And Jeffrey Epstein took it up to close to a billion dollars in business. Mm. So within that, I would say there very well could be linkage. Support Narrative's independent journalism at patreon.com forward slash narrative. And check out our podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe and download.